Okay, welcome to CITES Learning from CITES, result from IURC2. This webinar is part of the European Union funded International Urban and Regional Cooperation Program. I'm Susana Arellano, the Sustainable Urban Development Expert in the IURC North America Program. And as a reminder, this session is being recorded and will be available to all attendees. If you have any questions, please add them to the Q&A box. Uh, you can do that by clicking the bubbles icon at the bottom of your screen. And I would like to welcome Ana Guayarte, the IURC Program Manager at the Delegation of the European Union in Ottawa for some opening words. Ana, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Susana, and uh, welcome uh, everyone to this uh, this we uh, webinar. It's, uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here today and uh, with you, with all of you. I just wanted to, to be very brief uh, and to, to highlight the important role that uh, for us, these programs for the European Union have in order to, to, to make sure, because uh, the European Union uh, is giving more and more importance to the role of cities in our uh, green transition, our digital transition. And uh, for us, uh, it is uh, it's, uh, it's something we think is something we cannot do alone. That's why it's so important uh, to partner with uh, third countries, with other countries uh, in our common challenges. And uh, that's why that uh, uh, supporting this, uh, uh, this collaboration between cities is, is key for our uh, internal policy as well. So it is a, a great opportunity for me to uh, to listen uh, for, to you, uh, how you have enjoyed, how you have used this, this program. So it is really very useful, it's going, be, it's going to be very useful. And I thank you for uh, those of you that are going to bring your experiences uh, for this. And also I think it's, uh, it's very good for the new cities that they are joining the program. So welcome to the, to the new cities, I'm very happy that you decided to, to apply for this initiative. Uh, also for you to, to get insp inspiration and to understand better what the, the program con can, uh, can contribute uh, and uh, how you can uh, use it better. So I think I will stop it here. I'm really looking forward to hearing from cities and uh, thank you very much for uh, being here, for participating and for being part of the IORC community. Thank you, Susana. Thank you, Anna. And yes, I can just echo what you said. I'm delighted to have in this final session uh, four cities that have participated in our program during the second phase, Bergamo, Rimini, San Diego, and St. John's, and that they will be sharing the lessons learned and results from their participation, not only in city to city cooperation, but as part of the IURC network, which means also attending in-person thematic events and online sessions like this one. And I'm also really thrilled to have representatives from our new cohort of cities in this webinar who will start their cooperation early next year. We wanted to create this space so that cities that have participated in the program share their experiences and the new ones and a wider audience can ask, ask questions to start forging those connections that will enable you to exchange knowledge around sustainable urban development. As you know, and I've mentioned it to uh, most of our cities or probably all of our cities, we really expect you not to participate only during uh, your period as part of, let's say, uh, officially the program, but we want you to continue being part of our network and to keep on exchanging this knowledge and um, telling us about how things have evolved in your cities with the lessons learned from these past two years. So we will start the presentation uh, from the cities. We will allow for one or two questions from the audience. And then we will have the second part of this webinar be an open floor to discussion with our new cohort of cities and with the ones that have participated also sharing their experience a little bit more informally. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Elizabeth Lawrence, Director of Economic Development, Culture and Participation from the City of St. John's, Canada. Elizabeth. Thank you very much, Susanna. And let me see if I can share my screen here now. And can you see my screen? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Susanna, are you able to share the screen? Yes, I can. Yeah, that would be great. We tried this earlier and it worked. <laughs> of course, now it's not working. <laughs> yes. Just let me know um, when you want me to move to the next slide. Sure. So you have the opening screen. Thank you very much. 
So um, thank you everybody for uh, your participation. I will just say that we, as from St. John's Canada, the most easterly point in Canada, we're very enthusiastic about this program. So I'm gonna kind of give you an overview of kind of three buckets of things, kind of learnings, connections, and insights. Um, and sort of weave a bit of a story about uh, St. John's and our connection to Braga and the, and the wider IURC. I call it the family because I feel like it is a bit of a family. Um, and I'm going to kind of give some highlights of the workshops that we've attended both virtually and in person. The picture you'll see here is actually of the entrance to the harbour to St. John's, which is called the Battery. Suzanne, the next slide, please, Susanna. So um, our colleagues from Braga came to visit St. John's in June of 2022. Um, and one of the things that we did was connected them with the O'Brien Farm. The O'Brien Farm is um, an Irish, was an Irish firm in the middle of our city from the 1800s. And you'll see here a picture of my good friend David having his cup of coffee in Thimble College Cottage, which is a, a little cottage. Um, in the middle of our city. Um, and then the picture adjacent is sort of the, from the wooded area of the farm. Uh, the reason why we wanted to bring our colleagues from Braga there was to experience how a farm in the middle of the city was actually growing um, not just vegetables um, and not just insight, but was also growing kind of people's connection to farming, to forest re reforestation, as well as learning. And within the O'Brien firm, we actually have a learning center. We have something called Newfound uh, Farmers, as well as a Cloudberry Forest School for, for smaller children to learn about um, kind of farming and farming in community. And from that site visit, next slide, Susanna, um, what was really interesting is when we went to visit uh, Braga, we also went into an inner city kind of farm and we learned about learning um, about farming in the middle of a city. We learned about community gardens and a farm learning center. And from those two visits, so the, our colleagues from Braga visiting St. John's and St. John's visiting Braga, it really sparked something really interesting. And what that sparked uh, was a program or a funding program. Um, so the Exia Atlantico, which is a um, region of about 20 cities from Northern Portugal and Southern Spain, um, saw what was going on in the O'Brien farm in St. John's. And um, we have actually written a funding proposal. Uh, we're not sure what the outcome of it is yet for uh, potentially the O'Brien firm to do some consultation on agribusiness incubator in the Glacier region. So we're just waiting the outcome of that. So it was really interesting how those two visits really sparked some ideas for potential um, for a forest urban farming project in the Glacier region. So a uh, really nice outcome. Next slide. The other really interesting thing that is sort of uh, is taking a little while longer, but we think it's going to have some really interesting potential is we visited in Braga, we meaning St. John's, the Human Power Hub, which was really um, a center for excellence in social innovation and program solving. So what was magic? It wasn't necessarily about the location. It was about the people and the process and the place. And we learned how... Um, looking at societal problems, kind of really inspiring problem solving activities. You'll see the first slide here is actually a collection of Lego um, where the folks at the Human Power Hub actually use Lego, something that we're all familiar with to get people to look at problems and kind of use it as a way to kind of find solutions. So um, we were really inspired by uh, Pedro, who's our colleague here at the Human Power Hub, and he was giving us a presentation. And we had some further di dialogue and discussion. We facilitated some um, virtual discussions with our government um, from a policy perspective. And we we're really hoping to emulate the Human Power, Power Hub in St. John's. That didn't work out, however, the conversations certainly did inform some policy work at government, 
But uh, in January, actually, uh, we're going to continue on with this conversation. And I've introduced Pedro to some colleagues with the Community Sector Council, which is a not-for-profit organization that looks at social and economic development. And we're really looking forward to actually furthering the conversation between the Human Power Hub and the Community Sector Council. They're really looking at some programming and potentially how the work of the Human Power Hub may inform some of our work going forward. So we're continuing the program actually into 2024. So we actually have a date um, already set January the 4th to continue that conversation. So uh, next slide. So I'd like to say that we've had learning, um, we've had connections and we've had insights through the IRC program. And so we participated in three um, in-person workshops outside of the visiting to Braga and the, our Braga colleagues visiting St. John's. One of my colleagues was in Ottawa uh, learning about circular economy. I was in Baltimore uh, learning about kind of inner city um, innovation. And another colleague with the city of St. John's was in Mannheim um, in September. Uh, we've also participated in webinars. I know some of our transportation engineers participated in um, a conversation around um, bicycle trails and the like, and they found that extremely insightful. I will say that the, the webinars and the in-persons have been really informed us in terms of how partnerships can be developed. Um, I know my colleague who went to Mannheim was really inspired by how um, festivals and events were a real catalyst to some infrastructure uh, redevelopment. And she's kind of, kind of, kind of joggling that insight in her brain right now as she's thinking about things that we're doing in St. John's. I think the other thing for us in terms of insight was we get to see our work in our city through another city's eyes. And that's really insightful um, because, you know, we kind of continue to do our work and, but it's when some other city that's doing something similar, sometimes something different, asks us questions and provides perspective about our work. That to me has been really valuable as well. So it's learning from one another, but also seeing who you are through another's eyes. And I think that that's been really insightful for us. Next slide, please. So uh, just a couple of other pictures. So the picture, the larger picture um, is from Mannheim. And this is where we actually had a transportation engineer attend that session. And she was very inspired by how the work um, of Mannheim is really involved into um, multimodal uh, transportation systems. And she's taking some of that back and talking to her other transportation engineers. Um, about what's been going on there. The little slide uh, to the other side is one of our colleagues were visited a geo center in St. John's. This is an underground uh, facility that we where we learn about things like geothermal um, technology. Uh, the facility is actually built underground, so you actually go underground. And as you can tell, they were really inspired by what they were learning and seeing about the work that we're doing in terms of geothermal th thermal, um, technology through that geocenter. And it's an educational facility as well. And I'll, next slide. And so this is one of the quotes from one of my colleagues who attended. And I think it really does sum up a lot of what our experience has been with the IURC program. And as I said, we're gonna continue um, on with some other uh, conversations as well. And she said that development may look different depending on where you are in the world, but we're facing similar challenges and there's so much to learn from each other's experience and approach. And I think that really sums up um, our experience with the program. Um, so in my last slide, my last slide is my new favorite city, uh, which is Braga. And uh, I know when we were paired with Braga, because when we applied to the program, because we're a Northern city, we thought, and we're a coastal city where, you know, we, we are very much coastal ocean, uh, cold, um, and I thought, okay, we're going to be paired with a city, northern city, and we were paired with Braga. And I said, where is Braga? Um, so we learned a lot. It's a very 
similar city. It's a very different city. But um, I was very inspired. We were all very inspired by Braga. Um, and we continue the conversation. So um, I think those are my kind of closing notes. I will just say the, the program has been brilliant. And we do say we are part of the IURC family. And I'm really delighted to have a few minutes to just share some of our experience and some of our pictures from our, our travels. So thank you. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. And I wanted to also mention that as Elizabeth uh, was explaining, sometimes you learn about these initiatives, you're working towards replicating it, but it's not so fast as to see within these two years that there is a new program installed um, or already working in your city. So please let us know how this evolves because we do want to know, um, we've seen from the first phase of IUC that many of these things did happen and have been um, working and evolving in different ways. And that's very rewarding for us. Uh, so I want to open the floor to any questions for Elizabeth. Okay, uh, so, oh, David. Susanna, I have a quick question, if possible, yes. yeah? Because I know I've been talking many times and spending a lot of time with Elizabeth. I'm very pleased to see you all again here. And I know you're a huge advocate of the program, but St. John's is not, um, it's not new to international collaboration or uh, cooperation programs. You've had some others with even with the European Commission or with other networks. So I, I, um, there's a lot of people today who just joined the program, both uh, not so much from Europe, but definitely from North America. And, and I wanted to ask briefly, um, Elizabeth, we remember our conversations two or three years ago about what your expectations were, how we could help you move ahead with the program and all that. But you've been in several programs. What what would you suggest, what would you recommend the uh, newcomers, the, the new cities um, to, to go for, to maximize from what we do, seeing the differences with other programs, other programs do other things, but knowing the peculiarities, what our pros and our cons, what, what we're good at and maybe not so good at, what would you recommend them to do from day one? Because they're getting started and sometimes it's a bit of a learning process. So uh, what would you say would be, if, if you were to start again, knowing what you know now, but we'll look back at our 20s and say, oh, my God, if I knew now. <laughs> what I knew um, so what, what would you tell them? Let's say, okay, you, you know, you can, you can go for this or uh, try and avoid that temptation or something. Just a little tiny recommendation from your side that can be valuable to, to new people in this forum. Okay, I, I think I thank you very much for David and lovely to see you. Um, yeah. So I think... Um, from, and as you said, we've, we're connected um, on a lot of different programs internationally. I think for me, uh, one of the things that we did is we reached outside of the city of St. John's um, to develop our program. So we invited the O'Brien Farm, which is not part of the city as our city organization. But when we looked at the objectives um, and the thematic areas, we thought, hmm, we've got an interesting project. And so I think that that really helped frame up for us kind of how we could extend beyond kind of the work that we do within the city. Um, and so one of the things I think about the IURC program, it, it actually helped us extend our reach within our wider community. And I think that that was really valuable. Um, and I think as well, when we visited Braga, they did the same thing. And I think what that did is it, it really opened our eyes uh, beyond kind of just city operations to kind of what it is we're doing in our larger uh, community. And so I think kind of looking kind of beyond kind of your current cities, kind of what is it you have to offer? Um, I think that that was really insightful. Um, I will have to say like I have found uh, David and Susanna have been just really great in helping us understand the program and how we can kind of nurture our relationships um and and they've been really really helpful through that that we haven't felt we've we felt supported and i think that that's been really useful um and we realized that not everything that we saw in visiting braga we're going to be able to replicate not everything that we saw in baltimore we're going to be able to replicate but we we do know that I can connect with others if we have ideas or suggestions and those kinds of things. So I think for me that that has been the valuable piece is that it's helping up the helping open the doors to further connections, 
And the other thing for me, and this is St. John's is a small city where, you know, 150,000 people, we're not a big, you know, we're not a Paris, we're not a London. And I think the other thing about this program is it connects you with cities that kind of look like you. And I think that that's really valuable as well. So those are my kind of few comments. Thanks, Elizabeth. And I love that kind of look like you because that's very accurate. I think we get from most cities a little bit of surprise at the beginning when we pair them. And as they start working together, they realize that they have a lot in common uh, beyond that first um yeah, thinking of, of what could be similar or different between them. Um, so I would like to continue with the presentation from Julia and Alessandra. Uh, you will ask, why are they presenting together? Well, they were one of the first trios to participate in IURC uh, paired with the city of Aurora in the US. So I will be sharing uh, your presentation, Julia and Alessandra, and just let me know when to turn the next slide. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Susanna. As Susanna said, we are a quite exceptional case in the IURC program and uh, allow me to highlight that we consider as this uh, multi-city partnership as a strength point because it allowed us uh, to combine diverse perspectives and uh, sometimes to discover unexpected similarities between uh, uh, one of the Italian city and the American city uh, and in the same time discovering some differences uh, between the two Italian cities. So it enriched uh, the, the, the cooperation. Uh, um, as Susanna said, if you can change the slide, please. Uh, the, the cooperation uh, was, um, the trio was composed by three medium uh, side city, which is Aurora in the North America and uh, Bergamo and Rimini in, uh, in Italy. Um, we listed in this slide uh, the four main uh, area of cooperation that we uh, go through in these uh, two years. Um, and uh, in particular, we reflect uh, um, on the tourism and culture, which are uh, pivotal uh, aspects of for Bergamo, which is the Italian capital of culture for 2023, and uh, uh, for Rimini, uh, which uh, uh, is a candidate for the same title in 2025, and is, uh, of course, one, the, one of the iconic uh, Italian city uh, for the, the tourism. So we discuss uh, with the city of Aurora on how multicultural uh, events can contribute to foster the, the social cohesion. Um, in second place, we reflect on the role of community gardens and uh, urban agriculture uh, in fostering healthier communities. And uh, we discuss on uh, the regeneration processes and strategies that uh, um, reflecting in particular on the public and private partnership uh, uh, to renovate uh, um, abandoned buildings, uh, uh, municipal buildings. Um, we also discuss uh, on uh, some best practice relating to how to promote alternative transportation methods through urban uh, planning strategies. In the next slide, uh, you can see the, the key moments uh, of our cooperation that were facilitated by the IURC program. Uh, of course, the, the study visits uh, key, uh, um, play uh, key roles, uh, but uh, these visits were complemented by several technical meetings between the staff of our cities. And uh, in addition, we, we, we were engaged in numerous uh, networking events, both in present and both online. So, uh, we would like to highlight that uh, these opportunities uh, allow us uh, not only to learn about uh, other uh, some uh, good practice of our other European and American city, but also provided us uh, a, a huge network of uh, cities uh, uh, in order to discover and uh, promote other collaboration in future. I think that all our collaborative efforts um, are aimed to enhance the development of our communities, which are often characterized by similar uh, challenges, as Alessandra is going to, to tell us. Thank you, Julia. Um, 
Good evening, good morning and good afternoon to everybody. Uh, thanks for the invitation. Yeah, talking about uh, urban challenges, we, um, as we all uh, see it is in the world, uh, um, we have so many urban challenges to address. Uh, and uh, um, um, challenges that uh, can put uh, at risk uh, our environmental, social, and economic uh, sustainability. Um, these challenges, as we know, can be addressed um, separately or uh, together, uh, independently. So it's uh, no local government uh, through its own policies or uh, again, collectively through partnership. Thanks to this uh, um, cooperation, city cooperation, um, it was the first time, at least for our uh, city, the city of Rimini, we um, um, had the opportunity not only to, um, uh, to work together on uh, um, best practice exchanges and uh, uh, knowledge uh, now sharing on different projects, as uh, Julia um, said before, but we also took the time to uh, reflect and discuss uh, on the process behind this project. Um, despite the geographical, cultural, administrative distances, no, which, uh, uh, which, which there, there is, there are um, um, among us, uh, um, we found um, that uh, we could uh, um, try to learn and share some key points uh, on our different uh, uh, urban experiences uh, um, on the path uh, towards uh, a sustainable development of our cities. And we um, uh, highlighted, uh, um, we can um, change the slides. Um, okay, this is uh, just an idea of uh, the reflection we try to share together. Uh, but we highlight uh, um, some key elements you know, along this uh, roadmap uh, towards sustainable, urban sustainability to work on a reliable long-term vision, to engage and work with the local community, to highlight in di indirect economic and social benefits. Um, so this is just uh, an idea, um, this slide just give you an idea of uh, the processes that uh, we all went through. Um, thanks also to uh, the various uh, uh, occasion of uh, um, capacity building or um, net networking um, events, international networking events. Uh, we we participated to. We could also uh, we can also finally say that uh, uh, this cooperation. Um, um, main the, the lesson learned. The main lesson learned from this cooperation is in terms of uh, um, uh, sharing perspectives uh, and approaches uh, to, um, to address these challenges. Uh, um, uh, they, they can, these challenges can be different and can be characterized you know, in a different, different context, but uh, uh, it is sure that uh, all cities has to try to um, share the common goals uh, and the common benefits not to to try to to address these uh, um, these challenges so that's the we can um, um, move to the next slide so these are the um, the takeaways uh, we uh, um, we learn from this experience uh, a subtle shift in perspective um, that uh, that's it thank you Thank you, Julia and Alessandra. Um, I think it's uh, definitely a shift in perspective. I can remember one of the first calls we had uh, between Bergamo, Rimini, and Aurora, and I could feel that uh, Bergamo and Rimini were a little bit skeptical. They were like, Aurora, what are they offering us? They are showing these photographs of like these huge parking lots. Where are we going to mm -hmm. learn? <laughs> they were uh, mm -hmm. kind of worried about it. And then during that first study visit in Aurora, it was amazing. I could remember 
you all being so surprised when they were talking about their multicultural events and when they were talking about uh, urban regeneration and economic development in their downtown. And it completely shifted, as you said, um, your perspective and you started thinking about similar issues um, within your cities. So I don't know if there's um, any questions from the audience. I'm actually happy to say that um, I saw yes. Alex Minella is here. Oh, go ahead. Um, someone was speaking. It was Hi, me, Alex. Thomas from. Oh. <laughs> go ahead. Thomas, yes, go ahead. <laughs> ah, oh, thank you. This is Thomas Jakob, City of Hamburg. And uh, we applied for the IORC North America for the next period. We had some experience with you know, some others in India and Mexico, the latest in, in Australia, Oceania. And we uh, were quite happy and really quite happy to be now here. And uh, the question I wanted to ask to my both predecessors about the political impact which came out of it. Because when we started first time in an international collaboration, so everybody was quite excited. Wow, now we are doing something great. And uh, then we thought and experienced that the, uh, I think it was Alessandra just mentioned it quite quite clear. So the cultural and administrative distance on the one hand, but on the other hand, the similarities. So we have a several similar approach to citizens' participation, to data protection, to urban transition, which is quite different to African cities or to to Indian cities, for for instance. Uh, how far can you say that it influenced and accelerated? this neighborhood of or similarity influenced your political decisions to take this learning and say, wow, what they did is quite important for us. As I ask it because can you imagine it will fulfill all prejudices talking to Indian cities, which are quite different to us when their approach to bring things in action came to the effect that our politicians said, that's interesting what they are doing, but impossible for us because we are so different. And now we are nearby with a similar culture. And so I'm expecting that from our latest collaboration with the uh, Oceanian and, and Canberra and in, in Australia. So we see this readiness. How can you, uh, well, can you tell a little bit about how did the effects of this learning had some readiness to take these learning effects in, in your cities with the Canadian or US cities? Thank you. Uh, I just want to uh, to answer giving you my personal uh, opinion, uh, mm, mm, personal belief. Um, um, it, what you said, it's it's uh, it's now the right moment to open up to the world because the challenges are no global. So that's the moment to start a collaboration and uh, uh, an exchange of cooperation with uh, the fa the father uh, um, part of uh, of our world. We are the Western world. We have to connect with the other part of the world uh, mm -hmm. because uh, not common challenges are global. And uh, I think it's very important to. Um, to, to get the uh, the perspective all the the 360 degrees perspective so um of course um it's uh, um a very um small um um, um movement forward but uh, we have i i i personally believe that we have uh, to work on uh, um, awareness, uh, to work on uh, uh, responsibility, uh, individual responsibility also. Uh, okay, um, I, um, I, um, I mean, these uh, um, exchanges, this cooperation, maybe doesn't impact, didn't that don't impact on the political level of our organizations uh, we are all technicians uh, mostly technicians who um, now exchange opinions point of views and uh, solutions or, or knowledge uh, but still um, it's uh, mm, it uh, mm, I think it's um, 
it's important that uh, um, through this, uh, um, it's a capacity building anyway. It's uh, um, um, an experience also of capacity of personal and team capacity building. So we have to empower our organizations and we have to transfer no, um, um, approaches or uh, values or uh, way of uh, think about uh, the same thing, but uh, through uh, different eyes. Uh, that's the, um, I think it's, um, it's useful. It, uh, it, it could work to, to shorten the distances and to, um, Mm, um, not to um, direct uh, uh, all of us to the same direction because the goals are common. Have, mm. I mean, sorry for my English today. I'm a oh. bit uh, also. <laughs> no, it's great, Alessandra. And I just want to add that actually, this is one of the um, only, well, we've had only two cases in which we have uh, politicians directly involved in uh, the cooperation. One was in the first phase, we had actually the major be a big part of the cooperation all the time. And this time uh, from Bergamo, I don't know, Julia, if you want to mention Stefano's role. Yes, we had the opportunity to engage our deputy mayor for mobility and environment in uh, all the, the, the phases of the IURC program. So he participated in the, both the, the study the study tour uh, and he participated also in a lot of uh, workshop and webinar. And uh, if I may add some if I may add something to what uh, Alessandra was saying is that of course, uh, we didn't had uh, the, the time and the opportunity to change some political um, choices in this period. But of course, uh, I think that the, the, the participation of Stefano in this experience uh, um, introduced uh, some reflection uh, also at political level uh, on some topics. So the choices uh, were not changed, uh, of course. There was not time, there were not uh, opportunity, but uh, uh, our city administration started to reflect okay there are other models there are different uh, choices there are different kind of uh, go through the processes uh, and so i think that the 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 the, the difference that the, the 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 knowledge that the iurc program um give us is to provide this uh, kind of uh, starting point to reflect about uh, challenges and solutions mm. Thank you. And I know David yeah. wanted to mention yeah. something. Oh, Sorry. Thomas, do you want to replicate? No. It's yeah, okay. I just want to say, uh, maybe I was misunderstood or I expressed myself wrong. It's not about uh, exchange of politicians. So we also made our exchanges in the past with the technicians, with the departments which are working on the professional level. But we all are working depending on political or maybe cultural administrative roles and, and conditions and a framework. Is it about energy supply, the role of cars or change of energy transition, things like that, which has in our culture a quite other role than it has in Asia, for instance. Uh, so yeah. uh, the question is for me, this uh, makes it much easier. And how far did this neighborhood of ways of thinking beside or after this widening the horizon, which is great. And one of the biggest values uh, lead from your experience uh, to, well, to really action that maybe your department of, of energy said, wow, that's great what these guys in US did. Did they do something similar? Was something replicated or are the con contacts still existing? Because yeah. some of our previous con contacts are lost and some contacts are quite Liveable. So we still have contacts to partners we met first time four years ago, and some partners we met two years ago, there's no more contact. And when we analyzed this, this was a question of not a policy, maybe culture. So we met and said, wow, that's what they're doing, but it's not transferable, really, and yeah. we cannot learn or give. But from the other partners, wow, this is great, and there's a contact on the technical level still alive. And uh, can, you, can you tell me about your experience about these contacts which are alive, after the two meetings when we gained this wow great widening our horizon experience yeah um uh, thomas if, if i may uh, jump in here a bit uh there's obviously all sorts of cases some have gone deeper and longer than others uh we've yeah. had for example dortmund and pittsburgh 
Those are two mm -hmm. cities that knew each other before the uh, and had some uh, points of uh, of uh, of work shared in in a couple of specific areas. They both joined the IURC. We put them together, and after two years, what we've had is, for example, an MOU for cooperation uh, signed by both mayors um, that is uh, has been supported. You know, the signature and the, and the giving shape to it has been supported by the program itself, and uh, they're taking it beyond our own cooperation support. So basically, for example, after we finished, they've still we had a, a mission from Dortmund visiting Pittsburgh recently, specifically about the replication of uh, food policies. And uh, the, the people from Pittsburgh are coming back about uh, some hydrogen technologies. And so the exchange is going beyond the program. Of course, there is a, a, a huge support at a political level from the mayor's offices. That helps mm -hmm. definitely to keep it going long term. That may or may not happen. We work more at a technical level within the scope of the program. However, whenever there's an opportunity for this, we're absolutely going to support it. You can count on us to try and engage not only our colleagues in the European Commission, but also you know your political offices to go beyond the relationship. And to be honest, while we're you know we're all here in this North American European Union forum, I've got to say that yes, we've talked to other colleagues in different regions of the world and we are in an easier uh, place mm. to get together. Let, let's let's admit that there is a cultural, there's a language, there is a same approach to life kind of factor. There may be a big difference between the West Coast. I'm seeing Elisa, but she's mm. been with in many places in Europe with us and all these other seeing people that are really different to what happens in San Diego. And yet we talk to each other at a level that perhaps is difficult to discuss with many Indian cities mm. or, or many um, I, I don't know, cities from, uh, from Africa uh, or whatever. Uh, yeah, Africa or whatever. So we've got an advantage. It is easy, I think it's easier for us to, to, to gather people and to get them working beyond. So welcome to this little club. Um, mm. You must have done something good in your previous life. <laughs> but honestly, <laughs> we, um, we make the most of it. And I know that it gets trickier for the region, so count on us to maximize that that uh, yeah. speed channel that we have. And yes, it is a factor, and I'm uh, hoping that you'll have a, a wonderful experience with us, and it'll go beyond the the uh, scope of the program. Not that there's a limit to it yet. We're going for another two years, and then apparently yesterday we got an announcement internal from the commission that it'll go, uh, you know, beyond. And there'll be more news there. So this is not going to stop here. And the people from before will be thereafter, and we really hope that you stay put. Okay, so we'll support you in that direction. I know it's tricky, but you can count on us to maximize and to make it very long term. And I think that that's a wonderful segue to introduce Alisa Muto, Director of Sustainability and Mobility. Now that we Hi, have Alisa. mentioned uh, Hi, <laughs> your participation. <laughs> yes, um, good afternoon, good morning, everybody. I. I think I'm the most Western um, of the attendees today. So it is 7.45, uh, it was an early morning. Um, just to orient you a little bit here, San Diego um, in California is a, um, a border city. We are a really truly a binational region um, with Tijuana in Mexico. Um, that makes us very unique and actually um, qualified us for the world design capital as a binational region for 2024. And I'd like to say um, our open-mindedness for programs like that um, was influenced in part by the IURC. So um, thank you to everybody. Susanna has been our, um, our leader for the IURC through two co um, cohorts first with Strasbourg, France, and most recently with Madrid. So I will talk a little bit more about our experiences with Madrid, but um, to uh, the last speaker, to Tomas's uh, uh, questions, those relationships, those lessons learned last and show up in my everyday and in conversations and in other ways moving forward. So it's been a really great opportunity for the city of San Diego. So next slide. All right, so what is, um, my department is the sustainability and mobility department. It's probably the only one you will ever meet in that combination, um, though many sustainability departments do uh, include policies that directly affect mobility. Um, our department is, was really put together in response to a update to a climate action plan and um, has three pillars of climate policy and climate equity, energy, 
and mobility, which is long range mobility, ADA, which I saw a couple of my team members are on today, and um, scooters and new mobility technology, which I know we're all facing now from uh, micro mobility to autonomous vehicles, electric vehicles, et cetera. So next slide. What I loved about IURC for not just myself and my staff, but other individuals within the city is it really has tentacles that can get at people in all different departments of our city to participate in IURC. So we have the city to city learning exchange. Um, again, for us, it was with Madrid the second time around the virtual sessions that lead up and after your learning exchange that I found very helpful to build relationships before you ever meet somebody. Um, and then to continue those relationships and those ideas further um, beyond what you saw. And then the IURC technical visits as we, uh, I believe that Elizabeth mentioned that um, some folks were talking about that beforehand. We've had those all over um, Europe and North America. Um, very focused. I'll talk a little bit about what we learned from those. And then the IURC webinar. So similar to this, and I think they really started in during COVID. And, um, and it was a response to we couldn't do much else. And so it really platformed into a great tool that I think the IURC and the EU really built on in the last convening that I think will be a huge benefit to all of you bringing together all the cities. And that's, I encourage you share those webinars with others in your city, in your region um, to really spread the knowledge and spread the excitement and, and opportunities. Next slide. So our learning exchange topics were mobility, nature-based solutions and economic development. Um, Madrid is an amazing city. Uh, through our learning exchange, um, we, we really got to embrace those topics and realize how common our challenges are and some of the problems or things in hindsight that we could have done differently had we done it, had to check the second chance to do it. So it was really about sharing those ideas, being vulnerable in the conversations. Next slide. Uh, so. First of all, we had um, Madrid come here. We showed them a lot of, uh, we biked around our city. We are a coastal city. Um, so of course I have to take our colleagues um, on a bike tour of a uh, man-made bay area. Um, this is really to share how we have taken nature and worked with it in the past and are starting to regenerate uh, green spaces and sequestration opportunities in and around our city um, in alignment with our climate policy. You'll see down in the corner um, the teams together at our beach bug. Um, this is our new sustainable mobility technology that we also were sharing with Madrid. Um, and then a view from a natural uh, stormwater um, development in a new community in San Diego that uh, really conducts a lot of uh, rain runoff and, and stormwater flows during wet seasons. So next slide. So what did we learn when we went there? Well, first and foremost, near and dear to my heart is mobility and getting a chance to bike around the city uh, and see the um, Madrid uh, mobility hub, you'll see in the second picture, it was really inspiring to us to learn that a city has been able to limit traffic and circulation within its core, but accommodate other modes to allow for that uh, relinquishment of a single occupancy vehicle or a car um, for your family or for yourself. Uh, see micro mobility and the, the education uh, and outreach materials that Madrid uses. Uh, and then their transportation center and their hub of managing their entire circulation network <coughs> was something that is, was pending in the city of San Diego as an uh, improvement that we need to make to leap forward to better manage our system. We have now uh, been putting in more work to create mobility hubs in and around our city um, with one that we're working on in our central library downtown. 
Um, and there's another mobility hub scenario that we gained from the Mannheim visit just recently that I'm looking to partner with a private developer on, and I'll show you more about that. Next slide. We also looked at net, um, networking and urban development. So how do we bring together engineers and large capital projects to connect our cities? So we were able to go and see where um, Madrid is doing some massive redevelopment uh, along a uh, river corridor and a rail corridor uh, with higher densities and more mobility options and walkability. We had a wonderful opportunity to meet the, many of their private sector partners, which is very important for the city of San Diego. Um, in fact, this opportunity paired with the uh, Baltimore um, Urban Regenerative and Economic Development uh, technical visit were really catalysts for our economic director to, who just got back from Paris last week and Korea a couple of weeks ago with the mayor. So I really saw that this was a great opportunity from the program to connect. Um, and we got to go see the Real Madrid stadium under construction, which was amazing. And they fed us like kings and queens. So um, I had to put that in there. Next slide. Um, and nature-based solutions. This is something that wowed us um, immensely. They're in Madrid, they are doing a gigantic capital improvement project to cap a, um, a freeway or a beltway where there used to be a stadium nearby and they're making a large park with a lid over the, over the freeway. And to see something like that happen really has inspired our city. We actually are embarking on the replacement of a pier in one of our beach areas and seeing the potential here for sustainable construction practices. My team and I have been able to carry those forward to envision what can we do with a new pier? How can we do it and really feel confident that we can build in the future. And, and I think as North Americans, we do sometimes limit ourselves with, well, it can be done over there, but it can be done here. And we have to just imagine it and keep putting that, that yes out there for our peers in other departments who are looking to build big capital investments in our cities and really take that leap forward. Next slide. So what are we doing as a result? Well, as I mentioned, we're doing a lot of expansion of mobility options, similar to what we saw on our visits, both with Madrid and with Strasbourg before and other cities we visited. So seeing charging along the street, we're working to move that forward in the city of San Diego. Promenades, you know, we all know Europe has some amazing spaces that have been reclaimed for walking and biking and eateries. And that is something that the city of San Diego was able to do in the last couple of years with our Fifth Avenue promenade. And it really was inspired by our first convening with the IURC to put in bollards. Um, Strasbourg had put bollards around their city center. I, coming back, the planning director and myself said, we could do this here. So we did it. And we now have bollards that line our, our downtown corridor for to really take it back and create a nice walkable environment. Bike lanes, um, some of the challenges that Madrid had with, you know, you only have so much space within your right of way. Do you pinch down your roadway so much that it affects buses or first responders? Um, and then how do you correct from there? We have some of those same problems and it's not perfect in any city. So to hear that from Madrid as well and their lessons learned was a great partnership. Um, next slide. We also are working on our net zero buildings, uh, being able to attend and I'll, I'll share a couple slides in uh, Kansas City, some urban redevelopment uh, and decarbonization convenings, focus convenings, really has inspired us as I came back from Kansas City to see what not only Kansas City, but I believe Dortmund had presented as well and some other cities about what they're doing really makes me feel like we can put forward electric buildings 
or buildings that are transitioning that are heavy industrial through hydrogen, green hydrogen, to really have a lower carbon footprint and get us to a net zero in the city of San Diego. Um, these are just a couple of our buildings that we're moving forward. Next slide. So I mentioned Kansas City. It was a great opportunity to get together, see some terrific buildings that Kansas City has been doing that are uh, net zero. Um, and you'll see the building over in the bottom right hand corner with the on the rooftop, they had garden boxes. It was a truly amazing public space that lingered above the habitable space. And I, I thought that was very reminiscent of many of the European style developments that we would see um, in our travels. Next slide. And um, in Zaragoza, we had an opportunity to really immer uh, immerse ourselves in mobility options. Um, I am set on bringing mopeds to San Diego. That's something I would love to see before I uh, move out of my present position. Uh, talking about electrification of buses um, and hydrogen, green hydrogen options, uh, seeing all sorts of new technology and seeing terrific bike and pedestrian facilities around that city really was inspiring. Next slide. And uh, most recently with Mannheim, uh, we, we went to a former US air base that was being redeveloped uh, by the German, by the Mannheim um, community. And to see the mobility hub, I think it's in the top center, was fantastic. And it's something that I'm trying to work with private development to move forward. The building you'll see in the middle on the bottom with the solar panels, also something that is inspiring as we are thinking about the pier and how do we use every bit of our infrastructure to capture uh, solar or photo, use, use photovoltaic uh, panels. Um, and yes, and the beauty of the, the garden show was amazing to see, yes, how you could transition that space um, with beauty and, and greenery and development to bring it to life again. Next slide. I wanted to just say one more thing before I left. And one of the things that I took away from the exchanges was sometimes when things get really uncomfortable with policy or projects in our cities, seeing other cities that are doing the same can help us stay put and just kind of sit in that space of discomfort just a little bit longer because we know others have continued and trends have continued to to go in the positive direction. So I really wanna thank the IURC for all of the opportunities that we've had as a city. Um, the city of San Diego has definitely benefited from this and, um, and appreciate all of the, the support that you've given and our partner cities as well. Thanks so much, Elisa. I really love that you talked about the challenges as well. So as you know, when you're, um, or the ones that are new, you will be visiting cities, learning about projects. And one of the most important things is not only telling the success story, but also talking about what the challenges have been implementing these type of projects. And so that when they are trying to replicate it or do something similar, they also take into account what to think about before starting to plan that project. Um, so I wanted to remind everyone that we will be sharing the recording and the presentations, but I also want to invite you to join our webinar on January 10th, because we will be uh, launching our networks for the next two years. And as you notice, it's not only about city to city cooperation, but it's about belonging to these larger IURC North American network and sharing experiences with all of the cities that are participating in our cohort. And for those um, in the audience, we are also open to have uh, new members. So if you're interested, please come on January 10th. We would love uh, to speak with you and to have you be part of our network. Um, and last but not least, uh, I will put a link also in the chat to the survey. These um, webinars have been improving because of your feedback. So please um, just give us one minute of your time and tell us if this was helpful. For all of the new cities, if you have any questions, David and I are always open to answer them as you are starting your cooperation with uh, your partner cities. David, is there anything you would like to add? Uh, I really don't think so. No, 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 I don't think so. I, I really appreciate that you've taken the time. You know, the uh, the alumni of this uh, 
of this generation of, um, of uh, partnerships, of city pairings, to take some time and, and, um, and share your views and, and your challenges, what you faced and also what you got from the program with the, with the newcomers. It is most appreciated from us. I hope the new people joining the program will do so. And as uh, Susanna was saying on the 10th, we'll talk more about the networks. The networks are the level of work where we go beyond the city to city cooperation. Um, we will, we are, we have built and will continue to construct and to reinforce the thematic networks that are of your interest. So you can obviously widen the scope of the cities you can cooperate with. We've paired you with someone. We hope you've had a good experience. But we know that's not enough, and that's why all these events really open the possibility to new partnerships, to uh, more information, and above all, to set up a bunch of relationships that will last, will endure beyond the program, and will help you uh, build a better city, which is what we're all after in the, in the end. So um, I hope to see you there. And uh, now that we'll be seeing you again, obviously, all the, you know, I've seen all these friendly faces, all the Alisa's and company, and I... And I know we'll be seeing you next year and the year after, and wherever you are, we've had people moving from one city to another and say, hey, I've got this new city to join because I think this is really valuable for you. And um, so it is all about people too. That's the, my last message, really. This is not just about the cities you meet, it's about the people you meet, what's in the brains, how you can pick them, how they can share them with you. You're very generous with each other. And that's, that's a big value of this program, I feel. So you'll have always the European Union and this program behind it. And I uh, hope to see you again with the new year, okay? So back to and you. And I think so. Anna wanted to say something. Yeah, so the, this is, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so yeah, thank you so much. And uh, yes, now I just wanted to add uh, that uh, I really want to thank uh, the very good presentations and the work that you have uh, put in the, in the presentations so all the cities because you cannot imagine how useful this is uh, for us, for the European Union, as we are uh, constantly uh, thinking in how to improve the programs, if uh, we should continue, we should not continue. And we receive uh, so many questions about what is the real impact of, uh, of uh, these programs. Uh, so these very concrete examples are super, super useful for us. And I really want to thank you all the work that you have uh, really put in these uh, presentations because it is really very, very, very important. So thank you so much. Thank you, Anna. And I also want to thank uh, Robert, Alex, uh, Chris, Melissa, who also wanted to share their experiences about participating in the IURC program. But we don't have enough time. Uh, but please keep being part of our network because we will be happy to have you in our networking events and online sessions in the coming years. Thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful day.